Hi guys, um, just going to have a quick look at uh, another frame. Um, for a while I've been looking for um, a freestyle frame and I've had a penchant for something really low profile um, and the reason for that is now we've got the kind of um, flight controllers with built-in PDBs. It started with the Betaflight F3 and now we've got um, various others, the F4 uh, Flame, uh, the Matic F405 and the one that I generally use which is the DYS F4. You can get away with a really low stack um, but there aren't many quad frames that take advantage of that. Um, so for a while I've been looking out for a really good freestyle frame, um, basically a trainer. Um, and to cut a long story short, someone mentioned um, Hyperlow um, on YouTube um, and I had a look and thought Oh, actually, I want to give that a try. Um, so this is the Hyperlow 5-inch modular frame, um, which I ordered from direct from their website. You can also get it from Pyro Flip RC, um, and it came from America to the UK in two days, um, and delivery I think was about ten dollars. So it's incredibly quick delivery. Um, but basically. As you can see, I've put some motors on, I've put the LiPo strap on, and I've just temporarily put in a HS1177 just to see um, really what it looks like. Um, and the big feature about this quad is the stack height, which, as you can see, is ridiculously tight. So what we've got there are 10 mil standoffs. So this is going to be probably a relatively challenging build. Now you can buy this frame in a number of configurations. You can get um, this particular one I've, I've uh, made as strong as I possibly can. So I've chosen 4 inch arms, um, the 3mm uh, mid plate. Um, but because it's modular you can essentially choose what bits and bobs that you like. So you can choose thinner arms, um, a thinner middle plate to make it lighter. You can also choose um, six inch arms if, uh, if you wish to do so. Now the common problem with these frames or the thing that generally comes up is because it's such a low stack when you put props on there's a danger that you will hit your LiPo if it becomes dislodged. So they sell this in two top plate versions. You have the twin LiPo strap version which I've got here. They also have one with a single LiPo strap. I've chosen the twin strap simply to give myself more security. Um, and the test of this is going to be whether I get any prop strikes or not. Because the real perk of running a frame that's so low profile is when you put your battery on top you're going to have a really neutral centre of gravity. You're not going to have it swinging up here. It's not going to be swinging at the bottom of the quad. So it should make the quad fly really really well. Um, in terms of the frame itself as you, said, as you can see it comes with one top plate you've got this central kind of X shape which um, the bolts go through to hold the arms and then on the bottom you have another X shape which sandwiches it together with um, nylon um, self-locking nuts and as you can see it's got a few interesting features you've got a little hole here which comes out which you can use to mount your VTX antenna and it's got this strange tail on the back I'm not actually sure whether that, what that's for whether it's for possibly if you wish to run your VTX out of the back maybe um, the other thing worth mentioning is it comes with 3D printed camera mounts and the ones it comes with are made for your standard HS1177 camera. You can also buy 3D printed mounts which I haven't tried yet but I do have them for a micro camera like your, your Runcam Micro and also the mini versions um, Runcam Fox here mini that sort of stuff. Um, but I've got to say I absolutely love the way this quad looks. Whether or not it will work in practice remains to be seen but I have high hopes. I've played around with it and I think Given that I've got two LiPo straps and given that we've got quite a lengthy top plate I think I can get away without any um, prop strikes. Now you've got four mounts, four holes here which you can use to attach your uh, 
GoPro um, 3D printed mount, that sort of stuff, which they also sell. Um, and there's a few little nice features. It's a really low stack, so if you run a 30.5mm flight controller stack, if you notice in the centre plate, you've also got four corresponding flight controller sized holes. So I'm guessing if you were to run a long nylon screw up from the bottom, you could run it and almost hold it into the top plate without using any nylon nuts. Whether or not I'll do that, I don't know. In terms of the rest of the components, I'm um and oaring as to whether to use a DYSF4 or whether to use the Matic F4 or 5, which has uh, a bit that sticks out, which you can use um, to uh, to run your battery leads, or should I say your battery connectors up the side. Um, in terms of motors, in this particular case, I've chosen the new RCX 2206 2400kV V3 edition and I kind of ummed and awed about motors for some time if you watch my channel you'll generally see that I'm a fan of really lightweight um, racing frames um, particularly the Avant ones which tend to come in at sort of 60 to 70 grams uh, for a 5 inch frame this particular frame in its heaviest configuration with the top plate and all the screws comes in at 120 grams, so 50 grams heavier, um, which I'm going to feel. Now, I I looked at 2306 motors, the Emacs 2306, the, the new um, Brother Hobby Returner R5 2306, um, and the reason I didn't choose those, I think we get into a stage now where, where those motors put out so much thrust, they, they need so many amps that they're just killing batteries. Um, and even running um, the Brother Hobby Tornado 2206T2s, which I had on my uh, one of my previous quads, you can e easily um, toast your battery by running full throttle on, on those. So God knows what the amp draw will be like on the, uh, on the newer motors. But really what I wanted, because this is going to be a freestyle frame, um, what I wanted is, is low-end power, which of course those motors provide, but what I also wanted is efficiency. Um, and the V2 of these, there's not many reviews on the, the V3 which have only just come out, but the V2 of these get really good reviews and from what I can see they put out very very good power heading up to about 1400 grams, um, but they're also very efficient as well. So I'm hoping that you know instead of getting two minute flight times I'll be back up to three, three and a half minutes even with the extra weight. The big perk of these are if you buy them without the warranty, which I did, they come in at about 10 quid or 10 dollars which is you know half the price um, as to what you would expect to pay for you know a set of brother hobby returner r5s and they still come with n52 magnets and you know 7075 aluminium all the all the good stuff um, and as you can see they're pretty open on the top but the windings look really really good and you can see the, the, the magnets, the curved magnets. There's very, very, there's a very, very tiny air gap there. So they look like they would be really good motors. They certainly feel nice in the hand. The other quirk of them is they have obviously the usual self locking nuts, but they also have this little metal retainer which sits on top of your propeller. And if you look at the other side, it's it's got um, grooves in it. So I don't know if you've ever had a prop or a propeller or a motor that you really had to force to get your propeller to not become loose in its uh, when it's mounted up. But that should help with that. I mean, whether or not it actually works, or whether or not we're just adding a gram of weight or whatever to each motor, I don't know. But we'll have to see. But it's uh, something I'm looking forward to. Um, to trying. So anyway, shout out to the guy who mentioned um, hyper low frames. I haven't tried one before. Um, this is a pretty unusual build for me. As I said, I, I generally go uh, one piece bottom plate and a light frame. But because this is going to be, I suppose, a freestyle trainer, I thought having removable arms, and I bought a few spare arms for this, would be uh, 
would be a good idea and I like to try different things from uh, from time to time so this should be a really interesting and challenging build um, I haven't finalized the rest of the components yet um, I'm just playing around with a few different ideas and I may or may not keep this camera in it um, but yeah I really like it I think it's a really really good looking frame and it feels really sturdy um, at the front of it there's a separate plate here which kind of acts as a I suppose a, a bumper for the bottom of the camera and if you look that's a seriously thick wedge of carbon that just slides in there um, again four millimeter so the front end of this quad is really braced and really strong and at the back it's a lot lighter but of course you're not gonna you know when you hit you tend to hit um, nulls first so so yeah so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play around with this I think I'll probably do a video for each stage so I'll do a video when I put the flight controller in and possibly the ESCs um, and then I'll sort of show you how it how it goes together which may be useful for somebody um, the other thing I like about this frame actually just to mention is you can use whatever spacer standoff sizes um, you want so this is in its lowest configuration of 10 mil they also sell it in 15 mil but because you can mount the 3D camera mounts essentially sit on top of um, on top of this front standoff you could run this with 30mm um, standoffs if you wanted to or 25mm or 20 or whatever whatever you want so I've got some 15mm standoffs on the way if I run into any issues I might increase the, uh, the, the stack size but my plan is basically to, to make it as low as I can get away with um, simply because I like the challenge and I think it'll fly really really well so yeah stay tuned for that hope that was useful and again thanks for the person who uh, who pointed out this frame frame uh, to me and we shall have to see how it goes thanks a lot guys cheers bye